when I took my uh, PS2 apart the other week to add the HDMI adapter, um, I noticed that I'd spilt something on it and the some of the border corroded and some of the capacitors were a bit a bit dodgy. It worked, but I don't know how long for. So to future proof it, I thought I'd change some of the capacitors. And uh, what I did was instead of buying individual capacitors, because I don't know what those things are called or what numbers they are, um, I bought a second-hand PlayStation one with apparently it had a 40 DVD player on it. Um, turned up today, the DVD player is fine. It even had a disc in it and it worked. Um, but that's not the problem. The problem is that when I turn this thing on, <laughs> it it smelled like this PlayStation had a 40 a day habit. It absolutely reeks, like stinks so bad. So I'm going to take it apart, but. Uh, I mean, luckily I work in a place where I've got the gear to deal with that. Okay, here we go. Good evening and welcome back to the office. This is day three of my complete stripped down and rebuild of my original PS2. I say day three, these, these, uh, these days are getting longer and longer. Um, and today is no different, so... I'm back in the office, I've just started my lunch break, and I'm trying to basically do this on my lunch breaks and my coffee breaks. Bit of an issue today, um, while I was completely stripping the, the thing apart to wash it on the first day, I made a textbook error. Um, when I was taking apart the network adapter, I didn't make any notation of how it was put together. Um, the whole reason I started these videos, like way, way, way back years ago, was when I was building a uh, Raspberry Pi, and I was making videos of what I was doing, just in case I needed to change anything, or redo anything, or wanted to build another one, I would remember what I did, because my memory ain't exactly great. So, um, what I normally do when I, when I do all of this stuff, like the PS2, or the controllers, or whatever, is just make small videos doing it, um, just so if I forget anything or I need to remember anything or how things were put together, I usually take a few reference photos as well. Uh, didn't do that with this. And the Sony PlayStation 2 network adapter has got a zillion bits to it, which I'm not even sure... Like, I understand what a couple of these things are, but I don't understand why it's been put together so... Like, it's really complicated. So I'm trying to figure out how it went together so I can put it back. The reason being, for those that are unaware, the network adapter, as well as allowing the PlayStation 2 to connect to the internet via this sort of like broadband adapter here, it also had an IDE connector. So you have the information connector here and the power connector here to hook up an IDE hard drive. With this build, what I want to do is add a 200 gig uh, SATA, so serial ATA uh, hard drive, which I had just had sat at the back of a drawer. Now I could have got an IDE hard drive to put in there, but they're quite low capacity. Um, and like I say, I already had this one, it was spare. So I figured, why not convert this to SATA, serial ATA. Turns out, you can do it, but you, you've either got the easy route or the hard route. I've gone the extra hard route because I didn't take any reference photos or anything of how this thing goes together. So I'm going to have to try and sort of figure it out. Secondly, you have a range of adapters that you can put on. So this has got this, um, the SATA on one side and the IDE connector on the other. But then you have to figure out how to run power to it and it's an issue. These are really, really cheap. You can get these on eBay for like a couple of quid. But to make things super easy, what I've got is one of these. And I can't remember where I picked this up from. I think this was eBay as well. And this is from Bitfunks. So B-I-T-F-U-N-X. Although these are super generic and you can get them practically everywhere. They're Chinese built, I think. I would be very surprised if they're not well, they might not be, I'm not sure. But anyway, it says SATA adapter for PS2 FAT version 2.0. So what I'm going to do is instead of installing that and then trying to 
dig away with a knife all the rest of the um, the network adapter just to try and fit this in because it'll have to go over the original connectors. What I'm going to do is remove those original connectors and just add that instead. And then it's got some kind of, it's got like a little five pin power. Um, what's that, a Molex power connector? So, what I'm going to do is start out by trying to figure out how this thing goes apart and then swapping it over. I think job number one, remove all this shielding and try and figure out what is going on back there. I really should have taken reference notes, but I didn't. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. The goal being, when this is done, we should be able to not only boot off the hard drive using something called, oh, what's it called? It's called Free MC Boot, so Free Mook Boot or Memory Card Boot. And we should be able to not only boot off the hard drive, we should also be able to uh, rip my PlayStation discs to the hard drive. It should also get around, should also get around the uh, problem of region locking because I want to be able to play NTSC games on here and Japanese games on here, but I also want to be able to play my PAL versions and rip my PAL versions. So I'm going to experiment with that. Um, the other thing to remember is that I have no idea what I'm doing. I am basically figuring this out as I go along. Hopefully I can get it to work. It. I don't know if you uh, saw the first video I made, but when I said this, well, why don't I put in a hard drive? Maybe I can boot the games off the hard drive. It seemed like when I Googled it, it seemed like it wasn't that difficult. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna be that easy. So, first thing I'm gonna do is try and take all of this apart, swap it over and see if I can get it to fit and then try and get the thing back together. If I can, then I'm going to put it into the PS2. Now the the PS2, since I made my last video where I put the HDMI adapter in, um, had a few little issues uh, off camera. One, it started going a little bit green. So there was an, I figured it would be an issue with the blue pin. So there were little 12 pins, six on the top, six on the bottom and the connection to the blue pin wasn't great. So I redid that. I also bought that stinky um, nicotine covered PlayStation 2. It was so bad. I mean, Philip Morris probably was the original owner. It was that bad. So I stripped that, took out a few of the capacitors because again, when I was cleaning it, there was, it wasn't corrosion, but it had some kind of, I think it was Jack Daniels or something got spilt on it and it, it it went over a few of the capacitors and even though they work now I didn't really want to you know I wanted to future proof it so what I did was I just removed them off the stinky one put it on that one and uh, the only other thing I'm going to need off the stinky one is the clear uh, not the clear but the non rubber feet so there's two plastic feet uh, sorry four plastic feet I'm going to take those off and what was the other thing I took off the stinky one uh, oh, the battery. So I re removed the battery and put the battery in as well. So we've got a new P PlayStation branded battery, um, some of the clear plastic caps for the bottom, and some capacitors inside. Because rather than order the individual capacitors, I just bought one that was sold as 40, even though it worked, but it stank. Um, bought one that was sold as 40 and just removed the capacitors off that. It was a real quick one-to-one -one job. So the board's in. Uh, it's nice and snug. I've also cut the HDMI um, slot for the back. It's not pretty. I am gonna fill it and you know cover it and sand it, and it will look flush when it's done because that's also getting painted. But um, at the minute, it is just. Hang on, let me just pull it over. So at the minute, you can see it's just there, mounted upside down, and you have this hole. Here, if I shine it in the light, you see all this hole here. That's getting filled in. So all you'll have is just that, essentially. So yeah, the uh, the thing itself is working really well. I really do like the HDMI mod, it's cheap. I get that you're going from digital to analog, from then analog to digital, but I don't care because it was £3.50 and it took 20 minutes. So job today is not gonna be 20 minutes. Job today is figure out how I 
took this network adapter apart, figure out one of these zillion screws that I've got to put back, and then swap over this little board here and this little board here to that one. All right, cool. Let's get started. Okay, and now it's uh, quite a little bit later. I am making progress. It's slow progress, but I am making some. Um, the the thing that stumped me for the longest time is this plate here. I don't know why it attaches to this back plate through this data port. So the screws, the, you see the two little brass screws there, they would actually go through the top of the uh, this sort of like data PCB here, then through this back plate into this smaller plate. I don't know why it wasn't just one bit. I can't figure out whether the design changed while it was being produced or whether it was just over-engineered, but for some reason this is on a separate little sheet of metal. It's a tiny little shim that sort of like sits in there. Anyway, the problem I have is that where this would, these little brass screws would go through here and into that connecting this, uh, the adapter that I'm using doesn't have those holes at the top. It does have the holes at the bottom. So if I want it stable, what I've done is I've just taken a piece of plastic. In fact, it was just the lid of a Chinese takeaway container. What I've done is I've just taken that and then put it like cut it into a little rectangle and then put the screws through the plastic into the other side. So now it's attached. A okay. If you can't put them in on their own because the holes on the top are too big, it would just go the screws would just go straight through the top one. So that's now done. Um, what I'm gonna do is basically now just screw it all into the back plate and then put the back plate in there. Problem that I'm having, another problem that I'm having as well, other than these screws, which I know are the ones that attach it to the PlayStation 2, I've got four little brass screws, then I've got two little silver screws, then I've got two thin black screws, and then I add these other two brass screws. It's so weird. It's just like we've got a whole load of different screws in different shapes, size, and colors. These ones have got their own standoff, so I'm not quite sure where anything goes. And then the, the little purple PCB that I bought also came with four screws, but one of them's a different size, and there's three standoffs as well. I'm assuming that's so when you attach uh, this purple board to this plate, you can see the, uh, there you go, you can just see where the pins uh, come through, where it's soldered through the board. It's just so that those, I reckon the standoffs are so those, don't touch that silver plate, and then it shorts it out. So, what I'm going to do is try and squeeze it all in there, squeeze it all in there, and then put this back cover back on. And then hopefully I should be able to whack the hard drive in. Okay, and I'm done. Well, at least I think I'm done. That was an absolute nightmare. And the reason is I have got so much left over. I have got two screws here that came with this little uh, Chinese PCB, this little converter. Um, when you ever, you know, when you buy stuff from China on eBay, it doesn't come with any instructions. It just comes in a little bag in a little manila envelope, and you just kind of got to figure it out. So I've got two screws left over. They're not the same size, and one standoff. Um, don't know where they go. I've got four little brass screws from the original network adapter, and I think they're for attaching the uh, the original. Uh, connectors, the power and the data connectors. I think that's for them. I've got another two little silver screws. I have no idea where they go. They're not going in there. And then I've got the two big black screws to attach this to that, which I'm not putting in yet because I'm going to have to take this apart again. Not completely, but I am going to have to take it apart again to paint it. So for now, what I'm going to do is see if this thing actually works. Um, as you can see, the oh, there we are. Serial ACA, the SATA connector is in, and we have the SATA hard drive. So what you would do is essentially just pop it together on there. See, it fits nice and snug here. And then that slides into the back of the PlayStation. Now, I'm not putting the PlayStation together completely. Um, it doesn't need the DVD ROM, or at least it shouldn't need the DVD ROM. I've got it with me just in case it throws a wobbly. Um, and obviously I am gonna fill this as well. This has just got the HDMI out. So what I'm gonna do is slide this into the drive bay here, and then it should connect. And yep, that is connected. So now the network adapter connects the hard drive, which is down here, 
to the main PCB. So what I'm going to do is run next door, hook this thing up, and uh, see if it works. Okay, quick change of plan. Um, it's 24 hours later, and the reason being, I mean, the hardware is exactly the same. Nothing's changed hardware-wise. Um, the reason is that installing MC, no, free MC boot, and getting it all configured, and getting everything sorted out, wasn't as easy as I was assuming it was. I mean, maybe if you've done it, maybe, and you're sort of like knowledgeable of that, you know, that kind of thing, absolutely great. You know, it's probably just a walk in the park. But for me, particularly, you know, I'm not computer illiterate. I've been, you know, doing this for a while, yeah? And even I was like struggling with trying to figure out what the hell I need to do. Um, plus also you need a Windows computer. I mean, it's not that the software isn't, you know, Linux compatible and I have a Linux machine, so... There was that as well, so I had to borrow my wife's computer to get it all set up. Um, but, but, I think I've got it working, so I'm just about to test it out. What I've done is I've got uh, the basic image of Freemont Boot on the memory card. That's now uh, put in. I needed to, to install it, you need a, a USB stick. But apparently you don't need to boot off the USB stick. So all you need is the memory card and the hard drive. So I'm going to test that. Um, and also, like I was running into silly little problems. Like um, uh, all the, the, the instructions that I was reading. And again, these are like decade old forum posts. Um, when I was going through it, it was like, well, you know, you do this and then you should see this on the screen and then click this thing. And I've followed everything. I followed all the steps and I'm like... That option isn't there, mate. So I'm kind of just still figuring it out as I go along. But regardless, I've got a memory card, which, again, it can be booted from. And I've got a hard drive with two disk images on it. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Because like I said, I've been working. Well, I went home from work yesterday and then mucked around with it for like an hour just trying to get the just trying to get the disk images on there basically and the the thing up and running. Haven't really had a chance to test it yet, so we're about to do that now. Hopefully this thing works. Okay, and this is it, moment of truth time. Um very 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 basic setup just like before. All we've really got is the PlayStation innards. We've got no DVD drive in. We've got the power and reset button hooked up via the wire memory card and this here is the receiver for the wireless controller um, going quickly over to the back we have the HDMI coming straight out of the machine and this is basically just the power switch which are which is connected to the power board underneath so we've got all the basics ready to go the hard drive is in and you can just see the little white label there and that is connected to the network adapter which isn't screwed in yet it's just kind of all just clipped in as it would be we just we've you know just pushed in so fingers crossed let's get this working now the monitor that I'm using is a piece of junk so anytime that it changes resolution or anytime it changes anything it's gonna it's gonna go a bit wobbly but hopefully hopefully we get this working Right, I can hear the hard drive ticking over that's good should hopefully load into free McBoot. Okay, there we go, free McBoot. So, okay, and we're in. Whew. So we've got version 1.93. Now, again, I, going through all the documentation and everything else, I have a idea what some of this stuff is so browser is just the browser that you would have on the playstation 2 anyway with it just gets you go through memory cards and whatnot system configuration is exactly the same as you would have on there anyway um as for the rest of this stuff i have no idea what half of this stuff is like mc annihilator i guess that formats memory cards okay uh, i don't know what any of this is nes emulator sounds interesting but i'm never going to use it because why would I? I'm like got the Raspberry Pis, but I mean it's nice that it does it. Launch disk. I'm assuming would launch the disk from the DVD drive if it was hooked in, but I guess it's not. And power off PS2 and you know whatnot. What I need is here 
No, what I need is here, open PS2 loader. So again, using the uh, wireless memory card, uh, the wireless controllers, I'm just gonna start that. Okay, and now we've loaded up the open PS2 loader. Now the two, uh, the two disc images that I have on here, one is a European power game, which is 007 Nightfire, and one is the NTSC Time Splitters 2, which is what I wanna try because the, the um, region locking was specific to uh, the disc as far as I'm aware. So providing that I launch it from the hard disc, it should just go. So let's check it out. Now, and again, I've got a load of settings in here. Where, where's, where is it? Oh, it's on triangle. Look, I don't know what any of this stuff is, so I'm just not gonna touch any of it. I've got so much to play around with that, and figure out, which I just don't have time to do now. So let's just boot this and hopefully it should load. Oh my God, it actually worked. Right, so we've got time splitters too. Let's see if this actually works. That looks good to me. Okay, so I'm playing Time Splitters 2 from the hard drive. I mean, there's no DVD ROM on there through HDMI with a wireless controller. I'm playing the NTSC version of Time Splitters 2. So now we know it works. Then uh, that is a hell of a relief. So what I need to do now is take the main you know, the main PCB and all the, you know, the other bits and pieces in there, like the power board, everything else, that's all coming out. Then I need to uh, fill and sand the case, uh, remove the innards from the network adapter, uh, remove the plastic outer shell for that, remove the fan shell as well, take all of that off, sand it uh, and paint it and then stencil and then put it all back together and then we're done like I can't really think of much else that we'll do with it we've got HDMI we've got it loading you know and booting from the hard drive um, it's multi you know it's clearly multi-region now so I can boot anything from it this is great this is exactly what I wanted so I guess the next job is to paint it right cool peace